We're speaking with Victoria Bruce, author of Sellout. Um, Hi, my name is Victoria Bruce and I'm at the Thorium Energy Alliance Conference uh, because I wrote a book called Sellout and Sellout is about two men really um, that are organizers of this conference, Jim Kennedy and John Kutch, and really their patriotic fight to bring back uh, energy, clean energy dominance to the United States and also strategic materials that we've off offshored to China and that are, it's really a critical national security issue. And what form of energy does favor? Well, I'm a geologist, so I've never been afraid of nuclear energy. I've always known its potential, and I've always known that it's incredibly clean. Uh, I realize that we're using you know, 1940s technology, and it can be done so much better, and there are so many ways to do it. Uh, I'm really sad that our country has not taken a lead on that. Give us a little bit of background on the book. Uh, how far back in the history does it go? So the book starts in uh, the 1960s when Alvin Weinberg, who was part of the Manhattan Project, he was a nuclear physicist, and he decided that he wanted to do nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. So he started looking at other forms than the typical light water reactors that we see today. He wanted something safer, something that was likely to not be as um, able to produce plutonium because that could be weapons and so he, he started a program using uh, molten salt as a fuel so it didn't have to be cooled by lots of water in those huge containment structures that could be proposed using thorium as a fuel so uh, today we're looking at at this conference at possibly using thorium as a fuel as a much better fuel than uranium I know the Chinese are doing this and um, they're really, really taking the lead and moving forward technologically. And I don't really want to be left behind as Americans. You see Jim Kennedy as somewhat of a hero? Uh, absolutely, Jim Kennedy is definitely a hero. Uh, all of these guys here are heroes. I think it really takes um, a small subset of really dedicated people to go up against an entrenched system. And right now, we have a helicopter, but we also have an intense entrenched system that is uh, addicted to oil and fossil fuels. And now we have um, another problem, which is people believing that green technologies can solve all of our energy needs. And what what's this doing? What is this doing? Is it's crippling us from actually moving forward. Um, to do real, real solutions like nuclear energy. Some of the other characters in the book, can you say something about them? So I was really happy because I'm a geologist, but I have a master's degree, uh, and so I, ha I don't work as a geologist. I'm more of a writer and an author. But uh, we encountered so many people that were so smart and so supportive of this. And I think, you know, General John Adams, who was actually here at the conference, is a 400-page book talking about how we have so many military components that we need, including uh, jet fuel, including rare earth elements that we can't, our military can't operate without. And these are, we're completely 100% dependent on China. So when you have somebody who's a general, who was in the military, who was in Desert Storm, and they're saying the same things that Jim Kennedy, you know, a mine owner from Missouri, Victoria Bruce, a geologist and author, and many others in Washington, no one in Washington denies this is a critical, critical problem, and yet no one's willing to take the lead and do something. So that's my challenge, is somebody in Washington, be the hero in this story. You know, we'll give you all the credit. Take the lead, and we, we should not have our, our national defense hinged to China. Have you actually held thorium in your hands? I never have held thorium in my hands. <laughs> well, that, they do that at some of the conferences. They give you a sample, let you hold it, and uh, they say things such as, you can sleep on a slab of thorium your whole life. As long as you don't eat it, you'll be fine. <laughs> right. Well, you know, like I said, as a geologist, I've been to uh, mines that have radioactivity. I had ra radioactive rocks in my house. We, as humans, we need uh, a lot of radiation to survive. That's why we live under a big, giant ball of radiation. And uh, it's not, it's something that there's been a lot of fear mongering about for a lot of political reasons. And I find it deeply disturbing that um, progress has been hijacked by an environmental movement that is really has a huge environmental impact to make things like green energy, windmills, solar panels, 
and um, I really appreciate the people that care about the planet and I would appreciate them opening their minds and really looking at the data because it's impossible when people say we're going to go solar and wind only by 2020 and I think you know it's, it's crazy and it's not helpful and it's not going to bring us to the point where we need to be and I think you know whereas China and the rest of the world was always following the US in the 70s 80s and 90s we are now trailing and we need to follow countries like India and China who are looking at you know population big populations and doing something that will be clean energy and that's nuclear do you also feel the pressure of time do I feel the pressure of time? As a geologist, it's hard to say that I feel the pressure of time uh, on a geologic scale, but as a mom, I absolutely feel the pressure of time because what kind of world are we leaving our kids um, unless we address these issues? You know, a major issue with, uh, you know, is all of these conflicts, military conflicts around the world, they're all based on energy. Why can't we be in energy independent with clean energy as a nation? We absolutely can. So let's do it. How about we finish with you saying where people can find your book? My book's called Sellout, and it's available wherever books are sold. Its subtitle is How Washington Gave Away America's Technological Soul and One Man's Fight to Bring It Home. What a great title. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.